Hey, I'm Tashi and welcome to my home. Today, we are going to be making some retro granny squares and we're gonna be doing a really fun project to go along with them. So make sure that you hit that subscribe button before we get started so you never miss out on a fun crafting video. I love yarn, I love yarn, I love yarn, I love yarn. All right, it is eight o'clock in the morning on a Saturday, um, I have a massage in two hours. So I decided that this weekend I wanted a really fast project to do, but also my sister, after seeing some of the sweaters that I've made, check out the latest right there. Um, after seeing some of the sweaters that I've made, she actually commissioned me to crochet her a sweater. And obviously I'm giving her a family discount, so I'm only charging her $5 an hour to make the sweater, whereas normally I would charge $12 an hour, which is just a little bit above the minimum wage here in my area. I'm super excited to do that with her and I'll have a whole video on that process once we get to it. But she wants the retro, like Daisy granny square, and she wants it in a cardigan style. So she follows Elise Myers. I do as well. And Elise, you know, released that retro Daisy Granny Square like sweater that she made. And my sister was like, I basically want that, but in cardigan form. And I was like, I can totally 100% do that. So I decided that today I'm going to make the retro granny square to kind of practice to make sure that I have the gauge right, make sure that I'm using the right hook size, all of that kind of stuff, so that I'm like ready to dive in on my sister's cardigan once we get together and, and work out all the details and whatever. So, and I'm gonna, I have a fun project in mind that I'm gonna make with uh, the granny square. I think I'm gonna make two and then I'm gonna do something. I'm not gonna give it away because you gotta watch the whole video to find out or just use the timestamps to skip ahead. But come on, watch the whole video because it helps the sister out. All right, so what I have here is I have all of the essentials. Coffee, obviously. Can't do any crochet without coffee. Hook kit, which I love this thing. And I will link descriptions to all of the fun things that I'm using down in the comments below. Big box of rando yarn. And I need to decide what colors that I'm gonna use. And it looks like Elise uses three different colors. Um, and most of this is just regular size four worsted weight yarn um but i'm going to try to pick some that are like similar styles uh, because i do have a couple like different types in here and then i have my laptop with elise's video pulled up so i can kind of follow along with her okay i gotta pick out my colors of yarn and then we're gonna get started <laughs> i have a project in the morning Crochet projects in the morning, in the morning. So much yarn. Not you. Maybe you. Eh. Eh. Ooh, I like you. You're a yes. No. Absolutely not. I got my colors. Middle, petals, outside. She says to use a size four hook. So I got my size four hook. If anybody has a good way to like get your yarn out of your center, please let me know because I just kind of assault the yarn ball. And then I birth it until I find the end. Oh, got it. Okay, I got the end. Elise, tell me what to do. And then if you're gonna go back into that first loop. Three. Advertisement. I just realized I should be writing this down. So I don't have to rewatch this video every time. Where's my notebook? Yeah. What's next? One thing that I like about what she does, and she did say this at the start of her video, is like she not only shows you how to make it, but then she also like puts the instructions up on the board. That's not your yarn. Stay out of that yarn. Which I appreciate um, because I think I crochet a little faster than her because she's a beginner. So that's understandable. Okay. And plus, now I can just use this and I can write my notes down. <laughs> At least you rock. All right, here we go. Haha. <laughs> the 
placenta is done. It is finished. All right, what's next? So far, so good. It's pretty, pretty easy. Okay, what's next? Is this different but you also don't have to do that. Another ad. So many ads. This round is This round is getting a little more complicated because now we're working with two colors at a time. So I think I'm gonna watch it first, take some notes, and then I'm gonna try to do it. Okay, I think I got it. I think I can handle that. That's pretty easy. Once I started, I realized like, oh wait, I need to pay closer attention to how she like pulled the yarn through because you literally have to like push the petals back out of your way so that you're not even factoring them in as a row. So it's basically like you're crocheting a whole nother row into the center round. So your yarn has to like be in front of the blue petals, which threw me off at first, but then I rewatched her do it and I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. So it's easy once you figure it out, but at first I was like, wait, how do I get my yarn to go where it's supposed to go? All right, on to the next row. Now we're switching colors again. So now I'm going back to the blue petal color. Finish that round. Um, it's still looking kind of funky, but I'm gonna start on the next round here. I am actually having a lot of fun. This one is so much fun to make. I'm really enjoying this. Um, that's one thing that I love about granny squares is that they come together so quickly. It's hard to talk and count at the same time. Yeah, but they just, they come together so quickly and I have a very, like short attention span. Am I doing this right? I don't feel like I'm doing this right. Is this right? So what was I saying? Oh yeah, granny squares. I love them because they come together so quickly and like you just, you feel so accomplished in such a short period of time. I was not doing it right. No, I didn't do it right. I did not do it right. Not at all. Black magic. Oh, okay. Every other time, we're gonna be pushing the pedal out of the way. Oh, okay. See, I missed that step. Once you get it down, it's like, oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. But trying to figure it out <laughs> is a little complicated. I'm glad I'm doing this test because this test is probably gonna take me like three times longer than it will from now on. It's gonna be so cute. But yeah, I like granny squares because. This is like the third time that I've started to say this sentence. I like granny squares because, and then I get distracted. I like granny squares because they come together so quickly and it's really gratifying. You know, like I'm somebody that needs instant gratification when I'm working on a project. Otherwise I feel like I'm getting nowhere. I've said it before, but that's why I just don't understand how people make blankets. Unless it's like a granny square blanket. Like I could maybe make a granny square blanket because again, the instant gratification, but it would have to be like a friggin' rainbow granny square blanket because if I had to make the same color granny square for an entire blanket, I would get so bored and I would quit. But if I was making like different color granny squares, then it would be fine. I just get bored. I get bored so easily. That's why I like making clothes because they come together so quickly. Okay, I gotta count now. One, two, three, four, five. This was a productive chat. There it is. Look at that. It's kind of starting to look like a flower. Ah. So now I just have to finish the outside rows and I only have 
20 minutes till I have to leave for my massage. So this is taking a really long time, but the first one always does. And I gotta go, I gotta go do laundry. I don't know if I'm gonna finish this before my massage. We'll see, I don't know, but I'm gonna go switch out my laundry quick. Okay, I still have 12 minutes of Elise's video left. I've got the outside rows to do and I have 15 minutes to finish it. We're gonna see if we can whip this out really quick. I've done a couple of rows. I've got to get going. So I'm going to have to finish turning this into a square once I get back from my massage and get showered and, and all the things. But oh, oh, I love this so much. Like I even love the colors that I chose, but I'm definitely going to have to block this because the petals are kind of wanting to like curl forward. Um, so definitely gonna have to block this to kind of keep it where it's all supposed to be, but this is really cute. And I have a feeling I'm gonna want one of these sweaters after I make one for my sister because it's gonna be so adorable. So maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just make us matching sweaters. Okay, I'm gonna go uh, get massaged. I'll see you after. Am I still in my pajamas? Yes, yes I am. Am I going to my massage in my pajamas? Yeah, sure, you betcha. Do I care? Not at all. I am all massaged and showered and I made some bread, so I have been super productive. It is now 1.30ish in the afternoon and I need to finish this granny square and make another one so that I can make my project. And I'll tell you more about it once we finish this guy. All right, so we're almost done with the video. We only have like eight minutes left I think we only have a couple rounds left to go. So let's find out what's next. Talk to me, Elise. Okay. So we're gonna hear four okay. stitch markers. So first we're gonna put a stitch marker because that's gonna be our first corner. So we have Okay, I ended up watching the rest of the video. What? Kevin's having a moment. I gotta show you. Hmm, perfect fit. Look at that. Is that your basket now? Are you are you claiming that basket as your own? Kevin. I mean, really, would it be a crochet video without Kevin doing weird Kevin things? I watched the rest of Elise's tutorial, and she is so precious. So for those of you that are beginner crocheters, I think that this is a really good trick if you are not confident in um, your stitches. But she put a little stitch marker in the circle where each of her corners should go. So she made sure that she was hitting her corners right. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that because I have been crocheting a lot of granny squares for a really long time. So I am just gonna do the stitches that she says and I, I think it'll turn out fine. And then she does like a final round just to really emphasize the square. So it's a it's pretty basic and I will... Kevin, we're filming, come here. Yes, you. Do you like it? Is it cute? Should we make you a little kitty flower hat? That would make a good Kevin hat. If you think I'm torturing her, she's literally purring right now, so she's fine. Where was I? You always make me forget what I'm saying. So anyways, I think this is going to be pretty easy to um, finish up here. What do you think? Yeah, you think we can do it? I think we can do it. just finished the last round and it is so cute and now I'm going to tell you my plan because I think I'm actually going to add a little bit to this so my plan is I'm gonna make one more of these and then obviously I'll block it but then I want to make a purse um, so I'm gonna put like two of them together is kind of my plan and then I'll stitch like along three sides and I have this fabric that I thought, it's kind of like thick, um, but I thought it would be cute to like make a liner out of that. So my mother-in-law is actually gonna help me make that later tonight when we go over to her house for dinner. 
And the one thing that I don't like about crochet like purses and bags is that when people crochet the straps, the straps get really stretchy, right? Because it's like crochet and crochet stretches. So I have this craft cord that has been sitting in my closet for I don't even know how long. And it is, I guess it's got like a little bit of stretch to it, but my thought was maybe I make like a braided cord yeah, right? Oh, it's gonna be so cute. I'm so excited. I think I'm also gonna like crochet like a little piece to go in between the two squares to make it more of like a wide purse instead of like a just like a pouch. Um, yeah, but so then that brings me back to this. I'm wondering if I want to make it bigger. Like I can do another round around the outside. It would fit a phone in a book and really that's all I need in my life. So maybe it's fine. Maybe it's good. Hmm. Eh, yeah, if it's fine, it's fine. I can always make another one. <laughs> this is so fun. Where are my scissors? Okay, we're finishing it off. Here we go. Snip. And tying it off. Voila. Yay! I made a retro flower granny square and I love it. It's so cute. It's so cute. It's so cute. It's so cute. All right, now I'm going to go watch a movie with my husband while I make a second one. And I might time myself and see how long it takes because I am curious now that I know what I'm doing, how long it's going to take me to actually make one of these. So let's go watch a movie. the second one done and now I'm going to block them really quick the second one took me <laughs> the second one took me a long time it took me a long time because one I messed up because I read my notes incorrectly so I ended up having to undo like three rows <laughs> because I messed up the counting um so it took me a little bit longer than the first one just for that reason alone but then I was also distracted by the movie my husband and I were watching Wonka for the first time and that like normally when I watch something when I'm crocheting it's something that I don't necessarily have to like be fully engaged in. I really wanted to see Wonka and so I kept like stopping and like watching because it's so mesmerizing like that's a beautifully done show. Anyways I digress. It took me a little bit longer but I estimated that if I hadn't made a mistake even with being distracted it probably took me around one hour to do one panel which seems like kind of a lot but I mean it's a really really big one so if you take that into consideration it's not too bad and I, I'm i like estimating one hour total including blocking and weaving in ends so all in all not terrible but it's a good kind of um, gauge for me to give my sister kind of like an approximation of how much her sweater is going to cost because I wanted to be able to like tell her, yeah, it'll probably be around this much. So I'm gonna try to get these blocked. We are going over to my mother-in-law's house in an hour for dinner. And I really wanted to have at least like the base of the purse put together before we go over for dinner. So I am going to try to block this quick and then I need to do the strap that will go between and then get it all hooked together in an hour. So I gotta stop talking to you and I gotta get this done. It looks so much better blocked, honestly. And I actually ended up blocking it into a, more of a rectangle shape. So it ended up being eight by seven inches because like I could have stretched it to be eight by eight, but I honestly kind of liked the rectangle because I feel like it, it's a little more pursy, you know? Um, but it's also good for me to have the dimensions and kind of know like what I'm working with so that when I do my sister's sweater, I will be able to properly measure her. Um, the other one is just drying on the block for a couple of minutes and then um, I'm going to weave in the ends and then try to get the ribbing done. I mean that only took like, that took 20 minutes so <laughs> we have to leave 
for dinner in like 40 minutes tops. So I don't know, I'm not super confident I'm gonna get this done in time, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> Started. So I think I'm just gonna, yeah, I think that'll be a good width. So I'm just gonna crochet this so that it's long enough to cover, <laughs> to go around three sides. So basically it has to be 16 plus 7. What's 16 plus 7? 16 plus 7 is 23. So it has to be 23 inches long. And then I'm gonna just sew it on. I don't think I'm gonna finish this in time. We have to leave it. 15 minutes. Womp. Oh well, maybe I'll just have to go over to my mother-in-law's house tomorrow. Or maybe she can just work with what I already have. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Okay, we just got back from having dinner at my mother-in-law's house and I didn't get anything done. Like I didn't finish the piece before we went over there. But I brought everything with me because we like to sit around and chit chat. And so I was like, well, if we're sitting around and chit chatting, then I'm just gonna finish my thing. And I look at it. Ah! <laughs> Isn't it so cute? Oh my gosh. So this is like the piece that I was working on before we went over. And what I did was I just sewed it to the inside. So you can kind of see. I just did like a whip stitch all the way around on the inside and then turned it right side out and it's, oh my gosh, it's actually starting to look like a bag. And I cannot believe how stinking cute it, this is. Like I wanna make like 20 million more and just give them to all my friends and family because they're so cute. And so now I'm working on the, um, I'm working on the handles out of this cord or whatever it is. It's literally called craft cord. It's a four millimeter craft cord. And so I made one while I was at my mother-in-law's. This is the one that I made, which I think is so cute because it, if you can hear the squeaking in the background, I'm really sorry. My dogs are like hyperactively squeaking one of their toys. But anyways, so I made this cute little handle and I'm just gonna sew it like right inside. I think I'm gonna have the knots sticking up though because I do like the knotted look. So it'll just be right like that. Cause I don't like the long straps. I never use long straps on my purses. I like the short little handles. So I'm gonna make one more. I got it already cut and tied a knot in one end. So I just have to braid it. And then I did, since I finished this part while I was at my mother-in-law's, um, we kind of talked about logistics for the lining and came up with a game plan she kind of talked me through like how to cut it and we're gonna we decided we're just gonna um like obviously cut it to the dimensions of this so basically the exact same way i put this together so i'll have a two square two kind of rectangular rectangular pieces and then one long strip and then we'll literally just sew it together the same way, flip it inside out, and then I'll end up just stitching around the top. So I'm just gonna cut the fabric like half an inch bigger than this so that it we have room to sew it. And then we're going to sew the handles um, to the back side of the lining so that they're hidden. Like once we turn it inside out, then they'll they'll kind of be hidden like inside the bag or whatever so that you don't see these little dangly the little dangly bits okay i'm gonna finish braiding and cutting out all the things and yeah can't wait to show you the finished product ah! <laughs> i just had a thought that might be way easier because when i mush this down it kind of makes this u shape I could honestly probably just cut the fabric just a little bit wider than this U shape and then it would give kind of the same effect when it's inside. Wouldn't it? Like in theory that would work. I mean I do have a lot of extra fabric. I could honestly just do it both ways and then see which way is better. Yep, I'm gonna do that. And then I get to make another one. <laughs> Sometimes my mind is just so brilliant that I just want to give it a hug.
time, Kevin. Kevin. Every time, Kevin. There's stuff in there. Like, that's not an empty basket. That's cool. That's cool, Kev. I got this one pinned. I don't know if I did it right. <laughs> Do you need pets? Do you need pets? Oh my goodness. Um, also, I really hate this fabric because it is just like stringing apart. My table and my pants are a mess. Like, look at my, just look at this. I don't know. My mother-in-law will tell me if I did it completely wrong. She'll call me out on it. So now I'm going to try to cut the other one. Also, <laughs> these are not fabric scissors. I do not own fabric scissors because I do not own a sewing machine. Thus, why would I work with fabric? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't have fabric scissors. It's just, I don't know what to tell you. And uh, these do not work well on fabric. So this is, I think that's partly why this is such a mess and this is such a struggle. I have figured out that I can't pin all of this other one and I had to cut the long strip into three small strips because we're gonna have to sew the sides down and then we're gonna have to yeah we're probably just gonna have to like sew all of the sides and then come in and sew like the corner parts together otherwise it's gonna just it's gonna fold weird if it was like one long strip so I have the other pieces cut and ready to go I've pinned what I can so hopefully I cannot believe how just like seriously I can't get over there is string all over my table and all over my person. Ah! Okay, I'm gonna go finish watching a movie with my husband while I crochet another bag. I got another one done and I'm really liking the colors on this one because green is my favorite color. I don't know, I can't decide which one I like better, but I'm excited to see this one like all put together too. And it's almost 10 o'clock, so I think I'm gonna call it a night tonight because it has been a very long day. And my plan is to, um, my dogs always get me up at like five o'clock in the morning. So I will be up very early. So my plan is to finish this purse in the morning before I go over to my mother-in-law's house and that way everything is ready to just kind of put together tomorrow so I'll have two purses by the end of tomorrow hopefully if all goes according to plan <laughs>